Today we are reading chapter 7 of the Gospel of John in our Bible reading challenge for July. In this chapter we see no particular miraculous sign performed by Jesus, but rather an exchange between him and his opponents in the context of Sukkot, or the Feast of Booths, or sometimes translated as the Festival of Tabernacles. What's significant about this is how Jesus employs this in order to make his message all the more um, poignant for the symbolisms that it provides. When he stands up in the midst of the crowd celebrating the feast in Jerusalem and he says, those of you who thirst for living water, who desire meaning and spiritual life, come and drink from me. For the Feast of Tabernacles was instituted by God in the time of the wilderness. And it was a time of the harvest uh, and celebrating the very presence of God. Time when God's provision was made available because he was with his people. And both of these are significant end times indicators. A time when the harvest is ready, the season is now fulfilled, it's completed, and the, the harvest of the nations, as it were, are being brought in. Jesus employs this symbolism a few times, and we see this in the Bible, especially in the New Testament and in prophetic literature, and that the presence of God then becomes accessible to people. God being Emmanuel, wanting to live among his people. And so when Jesus says, come and drink from me, those of you who long for living water, it's also a reference of the time in the wilderness when the Israelites had no water and Moses then uh, instructs the rock and it bursts forth and providing water for the whole population to drink from. But there's a very uh, a bit of an irony in that because in Psalm 95, which is later quoted in Hebrews 3, the writer says, let us not harden our hearts as in the day of Meribah and Massa, that moment when the Israelites rebelled against God as they, as they grumbled for, for water and provision and not believing in God's goodness and, and right character. And that becomes the echo of this polemical conversation exchange between Jesus and his opponents when they uh, willfully refuse to believe him, even his own relatives you know, give a sort of snide sarcasm uh, towards who he really is and what they think of him. And here is the crux, I think, is when Jesus says that those of you who believe, those of you who choose, desire to do the will of God, that very desire will lead you to a place, will lead you to Jesus. And in that, I think there's a new exodus that emerges. In my view, I think there are three main thematic exoduses within the Bible. The first is of the Israelites being delivered out of the house of slavery in Egypt. The second is being delivered from Babylon in exile. And the third, I would argue, is the fulfillment of the Messianic age, that we can come out of sin, out of evil, out of the house of slavery into the life that Jesus offers and is accessible. And we, if we choose and long to do the will of God, it will lead us to this place of faith. And that requires a submission, a very a surrender. Because unlike the opponents of Jesus, we do not want to be in a place where our own uh, self-interest becomes a filter from which we cannot see rightly. And so we have to come again to a place of deep desire for the very righteousness, for the very presence, for the very life and truth of God. And so I pray that this will become meaningful for you as you read this chapter. So let me know what you think.